hook up here. And so this basket was hung and I was sitting here and I would just weave around, weave around, weave around. It would take me like two and a half hours to go around when I was working on the decoration. So I had some, you know, up to 11 hour days, you know, because if you wet the grass and dry it and wet it and dry it, dry it, wet it and dry it, it loses its, its natural waxes that are in there and it gets dried out, it darkens. So if I decided to weave, I would dampen the grass and then I would have to weave as much as I could. Like I said, I had some 11 hour days and it took me about a month, the whole month to do it. It was quite a feat. My name is Coral Chernoff. I'm a basket weaver, skin sewer, and I like to gather all my materials, process them, and, and make things with them. A group of us basket weavers, Alutic basket weavers from Kodiak Island, had an opportunity to go to two museums in St. Petersburg, Russia, and look at their collection of baskets. With the Museum of Anthropology and Ethnography and the Russian Ethnographic Museum, there's two different museums that have collections. They have the earliest collection of baskets, both grass, spruce root, uh, from Kodiak in the world. Up until then, we see a few baskets here and there. We see a few in the Bronoff collection. We see a few in books, but we've never seen that quantity. What's wonderful is, is the weavers were looking at the baskets, they were able to share with the curators their knowledge about what the baskets were made of, um, how they were made, and start to literally weave in more stories of what the baskets mean to, to us than just an ethnographic piece. In a book you can't look inside and underneath and you know the front side of the stitch and the back side of the stitch so to be able to see all that you get the whole picture the, oh my God, look at that, or look at the mats and look at how many they had and look at the baskets and the size difference, you know, from baskets that are, you know, this big to baskets that are that big. And to, to watch them is, is wonderful. The quality of the workmanship was, it's just unreal. Just un unbelievable. That was pretty inspiring, I thought. Well, I'm gonna have to come back and not be so lazy, you know, and just really put something else, you know, into my basket. You know? Let me see. Um, I can tell you how many days after I got back I started. It was about two days after I got back. Um, from Russia, I started on this basket. I mean, the whole idea behind the project, again, is to bring the information home, to share it with the community so that uh, we learn from our ancestors what they made, how we add to what the weavers already knew, and then we pass that on. And these are all the, the details that I wanted to put in. I wanted it to be very large. I wanted to use this technique of decoration. I had not ever used that before. And so I saw that on several baskets that were there. And the wonderful thing, like when you get to interview Coral, is um, she likes to do stuff that is not just for sale, but to have a functional use in her life. And I think that'll start to carry over into the students she inspires. But I, I wanted to put this handle. This basket is made, you know, to hold things. And so. If you put the handle just on the top, you know, there's two, just all the stresses on those two areas. So I wanted to put this handle going underneath. And then several baskets had um, this where the braid ended, this little stitch. And it looked really decorative, it looked really pretty, so I wanted to put that on my basket. I've started baskets before that like I think they're gonna do something and then they do something else. So it's almost like, I, I always think that I don't make things, I don't visualize the end product. I just pick up what I'm gonna do. And like this, I knew I was doing a big basket, but sort of the grass dictates
dictated what it was doing. And I feel like if it's not quiet and not listening, you know, then I end up like struggling with the grass, trying to get it to do what I want it to do when it wants to do something else. So that's why I feel like I just like shape stuff into whatever it wants to be shaped into. So I sort of need that quiet to sort of get that from it. But. <laughs>